Hey everyone, I'm the Island Farmer and this is going to be my garden tour video for the 2020 summer solstice. Left, and this thing over here, this weird green screen, I'm going to show you is my avocado tree. If you've ever done the avocado seed and the toothpicks and then planted it outside in the sun and it died, this is why because they cannot take the full sun for the first few years. Well, some of them take up to like eight years before they can take the sun. But we're gonna take a look at mine here. What I've done here is, uh, got in some stakes from the department store, some big ones, and you know, like, I gotta readjust this sometimes because the wind will bend these things. You can just pull them out, restake them down, and twisty tie this green screen on. Put a little bamboo sticks in there for support. But um, looks like the avocado tree is doing good. I planted this a few months ago, and it was a baby. And then it got its first little growth here, and now it's getting its second growth, which looks even bigger than the first growth. So I think it's doing pretty good, considering. Out of there. What's that clover? What that? Tomato plant. That. Alright, so from the avocado tree, we're gonna keep moving down this way to the chicken coop, the grapevine, and a whole lot more. This is obviously my chicken coop. This is where I get the eggs from. in that one. No eggs in that one either. We're not going to spend all day looking for eggs, but this is uh, a purple muscadine grape. It's a cohort muscadine, I believe. It is two years old. The first year it got maybe halfway down the chicken coop and I think it was only uh, two months ago it started leafing again and it's already down to the end. It's growing insanely fast because uh, the chickens kick a lot of sand out of their chicken coop all over and it's pretty good fertilizer even though it looks like sand. Here yeah, we're gonna lower the brightness a little bit and uh, see if that doesn't look a lot better now that the Sun is going full tilt. It's actually um, overheating my camera sometimes so we're gonna try to keep the camera in the shade but the chickens kick a lot of sand out and in between the chicken coop and the fence there it will build up I have to shovel that out every six months which is um, why I put that hose that little black hose which might be kind of hard to see but it runs from the vegetable garden way down there to this grape sprinkler it goes over here which is buried goes to the avocado tree sprinkler so I raised it off the ground over there so I could run a shovel back here without cutting it I need to be able to run a big metal shovel back here and get the sand out pretty easily because every six months it does build up pretty high and it's really good fertilizer so I like to use it around the, the yard to boost all the trees this is a Florida pitcher plant I have two of them. I did these earlier this year. I didn't really know if they would survive the full sun here. And when I first transplanted them in these bigger hanging pots, they looked like they were dying, but they're really coming back now. The interesting thing was I did this one in compost soil and the other one in peat moss. They said to do it in peat moss and I was just like, eh, let's try some compost soil because I mean, let's just see because they're both really good draining, being in hanging pots. But um, the weird thing is, this one recovered from transplant shock a lot sooner than the other one, but the other one is probably twice as big now. It took longer to recover in peat moss from transplant shock, but 
it's got twice as big now. So I guess it's like the the tortoise and the hare kind of thing. Got some uh, grapes. These are going to be turning purple soon, I think. This is my chicken coop. I know it doesn't look like your traditional YouTube chicken coop, but there's a lot of reasons for that. One of them being I designed and built it myself before I even started looking at them on YouTube. Another reason is this is Florida. And not only is it Florida, but I'm in central southern Florida. The low for this winter was 36. Chickens don't really need a place to keep warm here. Um, you don't really need like a complete enclosure for them. Also, I'm on an island in a pretty big neighborhood. It's like a concrete jungle on this island. There are no predators. I've never seen a raccoon around here. I think I've seen a possum once, um, but it, someone probably killed it. So I don't really have to worry about predators too, too much. I think the worst thing is maybe uh, hawks and osprey which uh, the ducks are really good at keeping everyone informed on when they're here. So they all run for cover when there is a hawk or osprey because the ducks will see that and alert all the other birds. They don't need an enclosure to keep warm. I have 12 nest boxes over here for them. Um, they have a, their own water supply which is fed through the rain catcher on the roof. This is a uh, food chute. I added this a few weeks ago because I didn't like opening this door. They all like to run out of this door every time I need to throw compost in there. So I added a little window here so I can spray out the water and put bigger things in there that don't fit in the chute. I got six Red Star chickens. I live in a neighborhood where I'm allowed a limited amount of hens. So I wanted to take advantage of, you know, six hens and get the best egg production that I could, could out of them, which Red Stars are the best egg layers as far as how many eggs per year you get out of a hen. Um, these hens are about two years old, so their egg production is gonna go down. Um, it's gonna start declining. I actually have uh, new Red Stars that I've already bought. They're gonna be here this fall, and I'll start raising them up. Uh, once they're six months, they'll start laying eggs. And around that time, I'll probably give these chickens to one of my friends that has a lot more land around here and just let them have them. They, they don't really mind the high egg production. They're allowed to have a lot more chickens. So if I'm only allowed to have six chickens, I want mine to be producing as many eggs as possible because I, I sell the eggs. I sell them to my neighbors and stuff. It's, uh, it's money. It helps pay for other things like their feed and stuff. Looks like we got a egg in there. If you can see that on the camera. This is a better look at their little water system, their food thing, the door. I built all this myself. Um, I did this uh, chicken coop two years ago. This is one of the first things I did here when I um, first really started getting inspired. And this chicken coop did cost a little bit. I put a little bit of money into this. It's over, definitely over a grand. I think it's closer to two grand now that I've added all this extra stuff to it, like the rain catcher. All this hardware really adds up, like the hinges, the little latches and the door handles. All that little stuff really adds up. The wire alone was about three, four hundred dollars for this uh, PVC coated black uh, wire, fencing wire. Which I double layered on the bottom and made the holes a lot smaller because the chickens like to stick their heads through it and I don't want them tearing up the grass out here. Probably make a video that talks about this chicken coop a lot more in depth. I don't want to waste a lot of time in the garden tour video on it. Um, it's getting hot. The camera says it's uh, overheating. 10 a.m. in the morning. This is that other pitcher plant that I planted in peat moss that took a long, much longer to get going from transplant shock. But as you can see, it is going 
crazy. The pitchers, it has so many pitchers coming in. And I love these little pitchers. I love looking inside. There's always like a lot of little gnats in there. It's like muddy with gnats. Probably can't see it too well, but that's the whole purpose of putting these by the chicken coop here because when it rains, there are like swarms of gnats around this thing. There's actually another variety of pitcher that I want to try to get. It's a uh, yellow Everglade pitcher plant. It's a lot smaller and it grows in shade. So I was thinking about maybe trying to put one or two inside here and seeing if they'll grow. So now we're moving on to the vegetable garden that I've turkey proofed. This is the drain, the overflow drain as well as the drain for the buckets. Feed part of the vegetable garden with water. That's a game camera to make sure nothing's in here. It shouldn't be. Got some collards coming up over here. Those are those black things are mole traps. Which I haven't actually seen any moles for a while in here. I have some sonic solar ones and battery powered ones that seem to be keeping them away. Looks like we need to turn the brightness down. So this vegetable garden was a huge expansion that is kind of included with the duck pond. I started building both of these projects. I started doing both of these projects when the coronavirus unemployed me from a bar where I worked. So whenever that happened in Florida is when this started. Pretty much when the stimulus check got here is when a lot of it really took off. Um, which is pretty much how much I spent on this. The rocks alone over there were like three, four hundred dollars. The pla the black plastic pond was three hundred. A lot of this wood was uh, left over from like the chicken coop project. And um, those little fence pieces were actually my old garden fence that I was using to keep the ducks and turkeys out, which didn't really work too well. I, um, you know, started off with one, one high fence, and of course I got right through that. Then I made it too high, and it slowed them down, but the female turkey kept jumping over. She's a little ambitious. So um, I decided to actually build a permanent fence structure here, as well as put this green screen behind. So they can't stick their heads through and rip vegetables out. Um, this green screen actually goes in the ground a little ways behind these stones, which also acts as like a worm and root barrier for weeds. The green screen also serves another purpose when the grass is mowed and spits all that stuff everywhere. There's not going to be all kinds of grass and weed seeds getting thrown into the garden which really helps out with uh, the weeding. Um, I have two little doors I built on here with springs on them. So they close behind me and latch. That way the turkeys can't figure out how to get in there, the ducks. So like I said, I'm not a professional with vegetables just yet. I have, that's my least amount of experience. I. Uh, really just got into vegetables probably like a year ago really um, this garden bed is brand new so that's why everything's really small for June that's why my corn is everything's pretty much just sprouting it's because I just finished this project not too long ago and it took probably a month for the soil to settle and develop all the microorganisms and all that good stuff that lets plants grow in it. I haven't even really had many weeds coming up yet. They're really just starting to. So what do we got in the garden here? We got the cucumbers down there that I'm going to try to vine up. Got some collards in the shade over there. Got some okra over there. I planted a bunch of stuff there by the okra that I don't think gonna take the heat. These are uh, ghost chili peppers that are doing okay. Habaneros that are doing really good. These are jalapenos that are eh. 
and then the green and red bell peppers which are getting annihilated by the heat I put a bunch of bell pepper seeds over in the shade on the other side over there see if they can um, maybe survive the floor to heat in full shade I got a bunch of sunflowers coming up along the back there look nice once they get full grown and I'll be collecting seeds from all this stuff it's a celebrity tomato it's my first time trying to prune suckers it's kind of interesting um, we'll see how that turns out we got uh, more sunflowers all this corn this is two types of corn and here there's also loofah coming up over there and what is that? That's a pie tree that came up wild. I'm not really sure how, but I guess maybe a bird might have ate one of my papayas I was growing here and pooped it out right there. I'm gonna have to dig that up because that'll get way too big. Might put that in a pot and try to sell it. So we got a bunch of beans over here, which uh, aren't looking too good because I just got back from a camping trip for a week and it looked like it wasn't raining when I got back. Everything was really dried out, even though the weather said it's been raining. So we got more beans, more sunflowers. There's a lot of little tomatoes coming up from seed. How about we come inside? Got sunflowers coming up. Got tomatoes coming up. Sunflowers, sunflowers. I got all kinds of um, just pepper seeds coming up all over there and over here. But these peppers over here are ornamental peppers. They're not really for eating. They just look so freaking cool and so colorful that I couldn't resist. And um, they're starting to die back now and grow back at the same time. But as you can see, all the peppers they dropped making more pepper plants all over the place so this might turn into a little pepper hedge which will be really neat we got the cukes coming up this is a uh, mulberry tree a dwarf ever bearing mulberry tree which will come up here in the corner and I'll keep that pruned hopefully it won't get too too big but it should give a little bit of shade to this spot here. That's a loofah that's coming up. Got a bunch of sweet peas that got annihilated by the heat. So that's the vegetable garden. It's only a uh, month or two old. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how this looks uh, maybe around fall or winter. See if uh, it's not looking a lot better. So. Moving on to over here, back here in the corner is the duck pond, which is kind of, sort of, next to, under that ginormous mango tree. Um, the mango tree does drop a little bit of leaves. Not too bad, though. And they do get in the duck pond. And I got a little net over here to uh, scoop out that, as well as feathers. What is that turkey doing back there? You're not supposed to be back there. That's what I'm talking about. Misbehavior. What are you doing? I got fences up. How'd you get back there? You don't even know how to swim. Battery died, of course. So it looks like Squinty, Tom, and Henry are all over there. Helen is actually over there, too. Henry is my male duck. Squinty is my female turkey. Tom or Thomas is the male turkey. And Helen is the female duck that is sitting on her nest back there. Maybe we can catch a peek of her real quick. She's not gonna freak out too much. What's up, Helen? You got any babies yet? Wanna say hello? No. She said, get the hell out of here. Look at 
you guys. What are you doing? Eating my banana trees? Yeah. Ah, they're walking around that way. I guess we're going to put a fence up over there. So just walking all over the pineapples. I just cleaned this duck pond out, which is why it's crystal clear. It's not really crystal clear, but that's as crystal clear as the duck pond's going to get. Can you guys GTFO? Go eat some bugs. Alright, kick rocks. Alright, the duck pond. This duck pond worked out really well. I um, looked up a lot of duck ponds on YouTube before I built this one. And I didn't like any of them. I'm, I'm sorry, I really am. I know you guys put a lot of work into them. And they're great for maybe like larger areas. But I don't really have a huge area. And I really don't like dumping these things out. You know, like I didn't really like the drain systems they had on a lot of them there. I'm on flat ground here. I don't have a hill that I can take advantage of to drain this. I'm on an island. It's perfectly flat. We're almost sea level here. So... I got the bright idea of, you know, using gravity, kind of like those water buckets there, feed the water dish below it with gravity. Could use gravity to just drain this thing. So I found a, a pond, I got it from Home Depot. I hate saying that, but it cost me 300 bucks. It's 270 gallons and I love it. It was worth every dollar. Um, it has this lip around the edge that's only like a few inches well I'll say like six eight inches you can see it pretty good there because it's nice and clear the ducks can stand on that and just stand out of the water and they stand on that and hop right out they can also just you know swim up to the edge and hop out but if the water got too low in here for some reason you know they could just stand on that ledge and hop out same with the turkeys turkeys can drown very easily so I didn't want something super deep that would be dangerous. And also the shallower, the more shallow it is, the less high I would have to make this to drain it. Cause I needed it a couple inches off the ground to run the pipe under it to drain into the vegetable garden. But um, yeah, I built it in a raised garden bed and I was like, yeah, I'll just build like a little ramp, you know, and see if they go up that, which they learned how to do that before I even finished building this thing. <laughs> uh, the ducks are incredibly smart and the turkeys copy the ducks. So that worked out. What do we have in here? We got some more Grand Nain bananas. Uh, these are two years old, just uh, the same age as the other ones. I got, I think I bought five babies. One little baby died. I planted the two back here in this corner before the duck pond was here and then those two in that corner. And as you can see, these are doing really good too. There's three or four new banana shoots down there. And there's five or six over there. So many banana shoots. And those are gonna be full banana trees. So I'm expecting some nice edible bananas here soon. These are all elite gold pineapples. I think there's like 20 or 30 in here. I went a little crazy on that, but I got them for really cheap from Puerto Rico, which is, um, I got them from this farm in Puerto Rico that supplies most of the Southeast with their pineapples, their elite gold pineapples. So I figure this is a, a good variety to have. This is something a little newer, um, a black goji berry. I was gonna do a red goji berry because of the sizing of the plant. It would work really well here. And remember, there's going to be a dwarf mulberry tree coming up right there. That's going to get big. But this, um, I was looking at the red goji berries and I found out about this black goji berry, which is even more healthy. And they call it a wolf berry or the monks from the Himalaya mountains called it the fruit of life. 
It's one of the healthiest fruits in the world. It contains fatty acids, which is unusual. So from here, we're gonna move down here. This is the charcoal grill. This is my mango tree. This is a very special mango tree. This is a uh, Nam Doc Mai mango tree. This I planted three years ago before I really started this whole project. And it didn't grow for about a whole year. Um, it just stayed very, very tiny. And then spring came around after a year went by and it had all these shoots come up, kind of like you can see these new shoots now. And that just blew my inspiration. I was like, oh my god, my mango tree is finally growing, my special mango tree that I spent all this money on. And it was so hard to get here in the States. <laughs> it's finally growing. And that kind of just hit my inspiration, you know, it was springtime, and that's what got me to build the chicken coop over there and start a bigger vegetable garden and start planting out a lot more fruit trees. So this is the scarlet muscadine grape that's making a ton of grapes. Hopefully my neighbor's AC isn't too loud, but um, this one didn't grow as long as the purple one on the chicken coop, probably because it doesn't have that chicken fertilizer. But it's still doing really good. It's making quite a bit of grapes. Um, I guess I'm about to find out whether my neighbor is fond of grapes or not. Because it's uh, about to head that way. Hopefully she likes grapes. Otherwise we'll just be trimming a little bit more. Alright, so we're going to be heading back up this way now. This is uh, the AC. And I got some extra stones here that need to go out front. I uh, put some wire around that AC to keep the turkeys from jumping on top of it. This is um, the fence that is a work, in uh, a work in progress that I was talking about. It's, um, you know, this one's painted. The one over there is not painted because of, uh, you know, the, the rain that we've had. It hasn't really dried out <laughs> in the whole month of June. So uh, right here, I have a lot of... Uh, garden beds that go along the house. I've uh, dug down about a foot on all of these and replaced all the sand and construction sand with good black composting soil. It took a long time to do. I've also put in sprinklers. Um, this is a yellow desert honey fig. That is a white jade pineapple that I planted this winter over here as an experiment. Um, this is two years old, but I think it's been planted here for a year. Same with this one. This is a purple fig that's two years old. They were potted for a year, and then I planted it a year, maybe over a year ago, whenever I finished these garden beds. This is a bit of an experiment because um, my white jade pineapples used to be down there and I moved them to the other side of the house which I'll show you in a little bit and they doubled in size and they're making pineapples already I did that this winter so I think they like morning sun this is afternoon sun over here which is why it's really shady still so we'll see if that white jade likes afternoon as much as they like morning this is sugar cane it's purple Asian sugar cane I have a bit of a gutter system on the back here above the aluminum screen porch and the water drains right here and you can watch my rain storm video to see just how much rain we can get but um, sugar cane apparently likes water so that's why I planted it here and it is doing amazing I'm so happy about that that's really cool I like having quite a bit of variety. So this is also a bit of an experiment here. The carrot bed. I took my uh, three-year-old nephew and I wanted to kind of teach him how to plant seeds. 
So I was like, hey, you know, let's see if carrots will grow in this bed here where, as you can see, it gets half of it, this half gets all day sun and then half of it gets all day shade. But that shade is so close to this all day sun that it's, it's very, very sunlit back here even though it's not direct sunlight. It creates a pretty interesting situation for a lot of plants. That's a catnip that can't take the full sun. Um, I think there's a bunch of red onions back here too. I think there's one right there. I've got lizards falling on my head everywhere. But that's okay, they eat the ants. I've got some cucumbers I planted from seed over here. That I'm going to try to trellis up here. So this is the carrot forest, so I like to call it. I uh, was teaching my three-year-old nephew how to plant seeds, and I took a packet of carrot seeds, and well, I was sprinkling a little bit in here, and he kind of dumped them out. So that's a whole pack of carrot seeds that has come up. That's why it's the carrot forest. We just spread those seeds around and they all started growing. So that's kind of cool. I know where to plant carrots from now on. They seem to grow really well right there. This is one of my most special trees. It's the last tree I'm going to plant on the property. The last large to medium sized tree. It's a red Tahiti coconut. It's a uh, very rare coconut. It's a very healthy coconut. And it was also pretty hard to find here in the States. And that cost me a pretty penny but I got one now and that's gonna go in the front yard to replace the palm tree that doesn't produce anything this is um, where I haven't painted the fence yet because I'm waiting for it to really really dry out before I put a bunch of coats of paint on it and once this fence is fully painted we're gonna put that green screen behind it also to keep the ducks and chickens and turkeys from eating everything in here which they love doing. So this is a bunch of okra seeds that popped up. I had uh, beans in here this spring, which are uh, I harvested most of them already, and I left a few on there to go back to seed. Um, they're just green and yellow beans. The bell pepper seeds that I was talking about earlier that I tried planting in the shade, um, they are growing, they do look healthy. Just uh, the only thing is um, the ones that are too close to the edge are getting eaten by the chickens, ducks, and turkeys. Um, yeah, they like veggie sprouts, which is really annoying when you plant a bunch of seeds and then they eat half of them. This is a uh, my little garden hose thing. I actually ran a hose underground to the water line and put a garden hose in here because this is more central to my backyard and this uh, Flexzilla hose can reach everything from this point. It's also a really good, just convenient spot right next to the, the door. All right, moving on down. As you can see the interesting sun I get here. This is full sun. We're looking east, behind us is west. So the sun goes straight overhead here, the way we're looking. That's the beach out that way. Behind me, it's the mainland. But this is a uh, full sun or full shade here because of the overhang. And certain times of the year, the sun line will move a little bit depending on the tilt of the earth. But it creates a very interesting shady, sunny spot here that these things just love. I got these things. These are probably like five years old. I was, um, I'm not gonna lie, was downtown one night and ripped one of these off a wall and brought it home and stuck it in the ground right over here. And it uh, started growing. It took quite a while, but uh, it looks really cool. The lizards love it. And um, I can just rip this off and pressure wash that off if I ever want to, but I really like it. It's a living wall. This is my oldest fruit tree. This is my loquat tree. It's uh, five years old. It hasn't given me any fruit yet, 
but it's uh, in the last two years it's more than doubled in size so that's uh, pretty much when I put all this black dirt in here it wasn't sand and it wasn't growing very well provides a lot of shade the leaves are so thick once it gets out a lot bigger should be a nice little shade spot for them during the heat of the day so over here we um, put in a bunch of asparagus seeds but I'm not sure if asparagus is gonna grow in Florida during summer <laughs> those haven't came up at all put those in there a few weeks ago I know asparagus takes a while to get going so we'll see it's Washington asparagus if anyone knows of a variety that might handle the heat a little bit better please let me know I really want to get some asparagus going for that loquat tree though that's my biggest tree right now but these are those white jade pineapples that are getting that morning sun they used to be they used to be down here in the shade and they only ever got that big and they'd make these little dwarf pineapples these little mini pineapples which was really cool but I thought, hey, you know, how about I plant them over here where they actually get direct sunlight. And they don't even get that much. You can see the fence blocks quite a bit. And this is just morning sun, which is, uh, you know, just like a few hours, really, like probably like four or five hours of sunlight. But they're doing great. I've got two pineapples on this year, even though I transplanted these this, this winter which pineapples usually take quite a while to recover before they'll fruit again. Pretty happy about that. All right, so this corner is my shadiest corner. Um, this mark on the wall right here, there used to be a gigantic elephant ear growing here, and it started shading out this area so much. You can actually see a little bit of, a, of the leftover blackness on that pineapple from all that shade I need to pressure wash that off the wall but um that elephant ear wasn't producing anything for me and it was taking up a lot of area and it's making this area pretty gross with all the shade it was making like bugs and stuff so I ripped that out but not before it went to seed which sucks because there's all these little babies coming up everywhere I'm gonna be ripping those out for a while I imagine this is uh, another dwarf mulberry, ever-bearing mulberry tree. These two I planted a while ago, uh, maybe this winter, spring. Um, all four, I have four, and they were all potted for a little while, and they were looking like they were dying. And I planted these, and it took them a little while, quite a little while to get going, but as you can see, this one is turned into a weed. Um, I've even been pruning the suckers off of it and I pruned all these suckers the first time and then it grew two suckers where I pruned the first sucker so I just went and pruned those and it looks like it's, they're just growing back already I did that a few days ago so I, I don't know what to do about that it's just gonna have to maybe I should let it branch out a little bit more before I prune it this one's not doing as good as that one but it is growing this is a bit of an experiment. It's a raspberry. I heard raspberries don't grow here in Florida. They can't take the heat. But this is such a shady area. I was like, hey, if it's going to grow anywhere, it's going to grow here. And it's June, and it's hot out. My camera's about to overheat again. And this raspberry's surviving. It might even give me some raspberries, which is so cool. A blackberry right here, which is two years old. You can see the old growth there from last year and then pretty much all this is t this year's growth probably got about 50 blackberries off there this year I just planted this one a few months ago it's a uh, tayberry it's obviously loves the spot I planted it um, it's one of the fastest growing things I have here really but um, it's a cross between a raspberry and a blackberry and it grows in my climate so I went with that. I was thinking raspberries weren't going to grow here. If that one does survive, I'm going to plant it in between these just because it's a little close to this mulberry tree. And 
I didn't think it was going to survive there. That's why I planted it there. Just kind of like experiment. These little elephant ear things are kind of neat. I uh, forget what they're called. They're some type of Florida elephant ear thing. They go away during winter. So there's actually nothing here but dirt during like late fall to like early spring. And I might eventually dig those out once everything else gets going here and try to plant some type of shady crop here like chards or lettuce or something that something that might be able to take the heat here during summer but live in full shade as you can see no shade all right moving on this is uh my water for the backyard i uh that's that gray hose that goes to the other roll and that's my sprinklers it's uh, literally this easy to turn on the sprinklers or you know if I go away for a week I could set up that automatic thing which I didn't do when I went camping and a lot of my stuff almost died this last week so that's how easy it is to water I have the like electrical for the house here this is an experiment I've been wanting to grow potatoes because I love potatoes. Um, I just don't want to plant them in the ground here and have to dig in the ground to harvest them because I got irrigation and all kinds of stuff and you know I just don't want to be doing all that work. So I came up with the idea of like what if I could plant them in containers and then just dump the containers out in a wheelbarrow with like a, a screen on top like a sifter or something. And. I got 10 potatoes that started budding. I bought some planter bags online. I think I got these really nice planter bags for only like 25 bucks. There's seven cubic feet of dirt in here, 10 planter bags. I could probably put about three more cubic feet of dirt in here now that it's settled. But one potato in each one and this is uh, maybe a month since I did that. Doing pretty good. This is morning sun, not too, too, too much. You can see the shadows creeping down there. Almost about to be in the shade. It's uh, almost noon. So we're gonna go to the front yard. This is some lemongrass. Um, this is like a horrible spot to grow anything over here. But lemongrass is kind of like a weed. And it'll keep the mosquitoes out of this uh, little hallway next to the house here. Also, I can um, harvest this lemongrass every few months for bedding material for the birds. And they really, really like this lemon-scented nesting material. I think mostly because they can't smell me or anything else on it. So, which is what they usually don't like is other people's scents. But they like this lemon, lemongrass stuff. I, uh, it grows like crazy. I think I harvested this one a few months ago. I'll show you the other one on the other side of the house that I harvested a week ago. So that's the work vehicle. And this is the papaya tree. This papaya tree is two years old, but a hurricane blew over one in the backyard and these things started getting way too big anyways. So I also was just using them to shade my bananas. So me and my sister cut this one in half, drug it up here, and planted it. It started uh, making new shoots. So we got several papaya shoots now. I pulled off most of them and kept these because I want it to kind of arch away and miss the roof on the house there. I might actually put a little bit of weights on these to pull them down even more, just to make sure they miss that. This is a red Caribbean papaya. It's uh, one of the largest kinds in the world. I, I cut it like pretty much in half. It was much, much bigger. It's a big, sturdy kind. A lot of papaya varieties are thin and they can snap very easily. That's the, pata that, the papaya tree and my work vehicle. It's usually where the trash cans go, which is why I moved the rosemary over to here one of the strongest smelling herbs that I have here. I haven't really been doing the herbs for very long. Probably uh, less experience with that even than vegetables. So 
this is a big learning process. This rosemary used to live over here, but I, uh, when I redid all the dirt, took out all the construction sand around the house and replaced it with black dirt, I moved all the plants around, and the rosemary got moved to right here. It's doing great. I actually had to prune it back for the first time because it was just kind of moving a little bit over this way a little bit too much and blocking out my tropicanas which these are really pretty flowers you guys probably aren't very familiar with these elsewhere in the world they uh, need a lot of sun and a lot of water and they're doing much much better in the black dirt that's a red tropicana and this is a orange flower green leaf tropicana it had some old flowers right there they don't really last too long um, looks like I might be getting first flower right there I can't wait to see what that one looks like this is a desert rose that had been growing out here in the front forever it's a white flower I want to try and find a red flowered desert rose to go right here I think that would look really cool <laughs> um, this uh, these rocks are because I don't have a gutter system on the front here so the rain just runs off and if I didn't have these rocks here, it would be uh, pretty messy from all the splashing. All the um, dirt would get splashed everywhere. This is uh, one of my favorite little things right here. It's a uh, giant clay pot I got at Home Depot. And this is uh, Indian peppercorn, black peppercorn. This is two years old. It really, really just started going this year, but I also noticed this is the side that the sun hits the most so behind me is afternoon sun the beach is out that way so that's morning sun so you can see this side gets plastered the hardest with the sun and that's actually um, sunburn on there so I need to add some little strips of shade screen around this thing to uh, help it out on that side I think you can see the side is super lush. It actually looks like it's trying to get out of the sun. It's like, no. So, moving on. This is a little herb patch, which um, I used to have some flat leaf parsley. I planted it back here in the shade. Um, it was growing for about a year, and I moved it into the sun which is uh, sun, shade, all, all day long. So I moved it over to here when I replanted everything and the sun annihilated it once, the, once it started getting hot. So I dug it up and put it back here. What was left of it, we're gonna see if it can pull through. We got some uh, sage doing really good in the shade here. Some uh, purple basil doing really good in the sun here. This is uh, my water in the front. Where is it? Over here. We've got the same setup. Uh, sprinkler on one side, hose on the other side. And then I just got a short flexilla going back there and then spooled a heat hose here for the front. I don't even know what these purple things are. They were growing in the front when I started this whole project. And they look kind of cool. This thing gets real tall kind of like a little Dr. Seuss looking plant and then those purple things were just for color. That's a uh, white eggplant. We've got two off of it so far this year. This is uh, the third one. It seems to only have one fruit on at a time but uh, you can see it's got some really pretty flowers. God everything's so bright. We're gonna... um, gotta take the for the cars to pass by. I gotta take the camera off the tripod for this one. It's real low. This is Go-To Cola, an herb I'm trying because it, um, it's supposed to be very healthy and help fight dementia and Alzheimer's. So, planted that in full shade. I don't know if it can get any more shady than down under there. I had six of them that I planted, one survived, grew a couple more leaves, and now we have these cool little 
root system thing is kind of growing off of it. It's kind of spreading now, so that's really interesting. I'm glad that survived. I can't wait till it actually like bushes out and I can harvest some leaves and make some teas for that. That's going to be really cool. This is a green basil plant, which uh, these basils pull in some really cool pollinators. I've seen um, a green orchid bee flying around this guy, which is, uh, I got a video of that. These are uh, supposedly red pineapples. I almost kind of feel embarrassed saying that because I'm not entirely sure they are. It might have, someone might have been pulling my leg with that one. Um, I planted those last fall and they're doing really good. I'm gonna give them a year or two and see if they actually make pineapples before I rip them up and maybe bring some of my elite golds out here that I have. This is my lemon thyme. This is my favorite herb just because it's so cute and it smells so good. It's doing really good there in the shade. It's even coming out into the sun a little bit. Chives, I've had those for two years. Uh, they started out <laughs> really small and I've got two huge clusters now. Um, I tried growing some catnip back there, but it died. And I don't know, clover's growing back there now, so. I had some mint growing in here, which was a huge mistake. Uh, I would suggest never planting mint in a garden because it will spread and you're going to spend a lot of time pulling it out. Um, plant it in a pot. <laughs> this is a peach tree that I got, when did I get this? Black Friday at Tractor Supply for $7. And I see why, because it was pretty much dead. Um, it was dormant when I bought it, which I probably shouldn't have done. So it had no leaves. I had no real way of telling if it was alive or not. Um, I've been looking for a variety of peach that will grow well here in Florida. Florida peach. This is a Flo King, I believe. Florida King peach. Um, one thing I don't really like about this is uh, it bloomed pretty late spring before it started making leaves and it's growing slower than crap. Um, I've seen big ones at Home Depot, you know, obviously a lot more than $7, but they had fruit on them early spring and I'm pretty jealous. So I'll give you till next spring and see how you do. If you're not doing good, goodbye. This is my lavender. I've never been able to grow lavender. I've tried several times because it's so pretty. I think it was the construction sand that was all around the house. I replaced it with black dirt. Pretty sure I had right. Fast and the Furious. I'm pretty sure I had it in the same spot before and it would just die. So now it's in black dirt, compost dirt, and it is flourishing. That is crazy. It's actually reaching for the sun. I like that. I like to be able to grow herbs in the sun. Then we got some leftover oregano. I had that big bush of oregano right there that I took out and put over by the duck pond in the back. There's some um, baby red pineapples that came up next to the big ones that I separated. Got a uh, purple basil shoot. As you can see, this is what the, it looked like in the garden beds before. It's uh, sand. It's like construction sand from when they built the house. Nothing grows in this except weeds and crap. So this is the last section in the front that hasn't been replaced with black dirt because I have a dragon fruit in a pot here. And I'm not done building the trellis, which is going to be a tiki man that I'm carving out of a palm tree that I cut down in the backyard. I'm carving that in the tr uh, garage out of the rain, and I'm going to put a bunch of wood sealer and paint it. It's going to go right here on the corner, and then I'm going to trellis, probably going to make clippings and get a few dragon fruit shoots going up the back of it, and I'm going to let it go off the top of the tiki guy so it looks like hair. These are more red pineapples, hopefully. You see that one actually kind of looks red. 
These are my other three fig trees that were in pots. They're just as old as the other ones in the back. But these just got planted out here. When did I finish all this? I think this garden bed got finished this winter when it was nice and cool out. Me and my little sister replaced all the construction sand with black dirt and that's when most of the stuff got planted. I don't remember which varieties of figs these are. I know the two in the back is a purple and a yellow. One of these is probably a brown turkey. One of them is probably a green one and then I think there's like a red one. I have three different colors. So when they make the fruit, we'll know. That's that fourth dwarf everbearing mulberry tree. You can see they don't really like pots. That thing was dying. So it's in the ground now and it's still alive so hopefully it pulls through. This is lemongrass that I trimmed a week ago. It's already two feet tall. And that's the scarlet grape on the other side of the fence. And then we're gonna go to the front yard here. That's my real car. This sweetheart lychee tree I uh, just planted in sand out here and didn't uh, do anything with it because they're a Florida tree so they should grow in sand, right? Well, I think it was getting a little dried out because um, it made new leaves when I planted it. This is uh, a year and a half old and let all the fast and the furious guys go by. So this is a uh, year and a half old, maybe two years old. Uh, the first year, it's, you know, kind of transplant shock and stuff, didn't do much. And then it, I think the spring came around last year and it made its new leaves. And uh, this year, it was just, uh, we didn't get much rain. And this tree is actually not on my sprinkler system that all this is on, which is what I talked about earlier. When everything, like 90% of your stuff is on a sprinkler system, and then you have one thing that isn't, that one thing gets neglected. Because <laughs> I have to stretch out a hose to water this. So I'm gonna, just like the avocado tree in the back, I'm gonna branch off the sprinklers here and bury a small line to put a sprinkler on this. That way it's not getting neglected anymore and doesn't um, you know, start drying out. I put a bunch of compost dirt on top, which acts as like a mulch, and then I've been putting some chicken poop in there as well to fertilize it. And uh, I just started doing that. I've been trying to put the hose on it when it uh, doesn't rain. It looks like we're getting some leaves. So excited about that because this tree cost a pretty penny too. Litchies are no joke. And this is a hybrid sweetheart lychee, so I got the stakes like that because of hurricanes. If we do get a hurricane headed this way, I put two more in and um, that keeps it from moving. I don't want a hurricane to snap this $200 tree in half. So put them at angles like that makes it very sturdy. And if I put two more in, coming like that, this thing won't budge, even in 80 mile an hour, 100 mile an hour wind. It might lose all its leaves, but it won't snap in half. And that's the coconut palm. No, that's not the coconut palm. This is the palm tree that's gonna get cut down and gonna plant a red Tahiti coconut right there. So that's the entire garden tour video. As you can see, it got way too hot for a shirt and sandals. I, uh, I'm gonna make this short and sweet because it looks like a rainstorm's coming in and I got about 15 minutes to get out of it before it comes down real hard. I'm glad I got the first half of the day to uh, actually film this before uh, the summer solstice. I'm gonna try to go edit it and upload it to you guys and I hope you enjoy it.